we will learn all about how philosophy influenced psychology. We will review the clockwork universe, the beginnings of modern science, the contributions of Descartes, and the mind-body problem. Throughout England and Western Europe, a vast number of newly developed machines were being put to daily use to extend or replace human muscle power. Pumps, levers, pulleys, cranes, wheels, and gears powered water mills and windmills to grind grain, saw wood, weave textile, and accomplish other forms of labor-intensive work. Machines became familiar to people at all levels of society, from peasant to aristocrat, and soon they were accepted as natural part of everyday life. The prevailing climate of thought in the 17th to 19th centuries was the intellect soil that nourished the new psychology. Again, the image of the universe as a great machine. This doctrine held that all natural processes are mechanically determined and are capable of being explained by the laws of physics and chemistry. The idea originated in physics, then called natural philosophy, as a result of work of the Italian physicist Galileo and the English physicist and mathematician Isaac Newton, who had been trained as a clockmaker, by the way. Everything that existed in the universe was assumed to be composed of particles of matter in motion. If the universe consists of atoms in motion, then every physical effect, the motion of each atom, of course, follows from a direct cause, which is the motion of the atom that strikes it. The methods and findings of science were growing space with technology during this period, and the two meshed effectively. The precise measurement of time had both scientific and practical consequences. Without accurate timekeeping instruments, there could be no measurement of small increments of time. The mechanical clock was the ideal metaphor for the 17th century spirit. Clocks in the 17th century were a technological sensation, as astonishing and influential as computers would become in the 20th century. Some were small enough to fit on the tabletop or even to be carried on one's person. Larger clocks housed in church towers and government buildings could be seen and heard by residents for miles around. Because of the regularity of these clocks, scientists and philosophers began to think of them as models for the physical universe. This idea also became a model for the founding of the United States and the development of American politics. Let us review determinism and reductionism. When seen as a clockwise machine, the universe, once it was created by God and set in motion, would continue to function efficiently without any outside interference. Thus, the clock metaphor for the universe encompasses the idea of determinism, the belief that every act is determined or caused by past events. In other words, we can predict the changes that will occur in the operation of the clock as well as in the universe because we understand the order and regularity with which its parts function. It was not difficult to gain insight into the structure and workings of a clock. 
A person could disassemble a clock and see exactly how its springs and gears operate. This led scientists to popularize the notion of reductionism. The workings of machines, such as clocks, could be understood by reducing them to their basic components. As we know, the 17th century saw far-ranging developments in science. Until that time, philosophers had looked to the past for answers, to the works of Aristotle and other ancient scholars, and to the Bible. The ruling forces of philosophical inquiry were dogma, which is the doctrine proclaimed by the established church, and authority figures. In the 17th century, a new force became important, known as empiricism, the pursuit of knowledge through observation and experimentation. Knowledge handed down from the past became suspect. In its place, the golden age of the 17th century became illuminated by discoveries and insights that reflected the changing nature among the many scholars whose creativity marked that period. The French mathematician and philosopher René Descartes contributed directly to the history of modern psychology. His work helped to free scientific inquiry from the control of rigid, centuries-old theological and intellectual beliefs. Descartes symbolized the transition to the modern era of science, and he applied the data of the clockwork to the human body of scientific inquiry. Descartes' most important contribution to the development of modern psychology was his attempt to resolve the centuries-old controversy about the mind-body problem. Throughout the ages, scholars had argued about how the mind, which was known as the soul or spirit, could be distinguished from the body and all other physical qualities. So the question was this, are mind and body, the mental world and the material world, distinct from each other? For thousands of years, scholars had taken a dualistic position, arguing that the mind and the body had different natures. However, accepting the dualistic position raises other questions. If the mind and body are of different natures, what are their relationship to one another? How do they interact? Are they independent or does one influence the other? Before Descartes, the accepted theory was that interaction between mind and body flowed primarily in one direction. The mind could exert an enormous influence on the body, but the body had little effect on the mind. It was thought that the body and mind were related in the same way that a puppet and its puppeteer were joined. The mind is like the puppeteer pulling the strings of the body. In Descartes' quite different theory of mind-body interaction, the mind influences the body, but the body exerts a greater influence on the mind than previously supposed. The relationship is not in one direction, but rather it is mutual interaction. This idea, considered radical in the 17th century, was important implications for psychology. After Descartes published his doctrine, many of his contemporaries decided they could no longer support the conventional idea that the mind was the master of the two entities, the puppeteer pulling the strings functioning almost independently of the body. 
As a result, scientists and philosophers came to assign a greater importance to the physical or material body. Functions previously attributed to the mind were now considered functions of the body. So, scientists accepted mind and body as two separate entities. Matter, the body's material substance, can be said to have extension in that it makes up space and to operate according to mechanical principles. The mind, however, is free. It is unextended and lacks physical substance. Descartes' revolutionary ideas is that mind and body, although distinct, are capable of interacting within the human organism. The mind can influence the body, and the body can influence the mind.